Learning by Doing presents The Mad Dash. Watch us every Tuesday morning on YouTube. Join me and multiple crew members as I take our Crowley catamaran from Sydney, Australia all the way up around the top to Lombok in Indonesia. Made possible by our patrons. Thank you very much, you guys, and also our sponsors here on board for this trip. Thanks so much, guys. You can also follow us along on Marine Traffic or Vessel Finder. Trade Runner is the name. G'day, guys. Welcome back. Another video here. We're uh, dashing today from Yamba up to the Gold Coast. It's going to be pretty shitty weather to be honest um, we've been here in yamba a couple of days no wind just completely dead and this is the first bit of wind and um, it started at about lunchtime today but there was no point leaving at lunchtime because it's a 95 mile run and it's a bar crossing on the exit and a bar crossing on the entry so i don't want to leave or get there at night time so basically we're leaving now which is about 4 30 in the afternoon and we'll get there about uh, sunrise six or something like that. It's gonna be about 12 to 14 hours. We'll try and keep it mellow, about seven knot average. And it's gonna be 15 to 20 knots from the southeast. So it should be a pretty good run. It's just gonna be wet, it's raining. I mean, look at this weather. You ready for tonight? Yep. You scared? Yes. You scared? No, not really. Haven't seen big waves yet. Maybe you will tonight. Yeah, hope so. It's <laughs> <laughs> a bit more exciting. <laughs> what are you getting the last minute bit of food? Well, I'll sort of make, make a sandwich now. Instead of trying to make it while it's uh, a bit rocking and rolling, make it now. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. A bit ready to go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I got the boat all ready, packed everything up, made everything, you know, locked everything down. Um, we'll just be under jib and main tonight, maybe even just a jib. Um, just because we don't need to go fast. There's no point getting there before 6 a.m. because it'll be dark still. I don't want to cross the bar in the dark. So, uh, yeah, seven knots with this downwind run, 15 to 20 knots. Um, probably just have a couple of reefs in the main and the jib out and then if we're still going too fast just drop the main and just cruise along with the jib but um yeah got everything ready batteries are full um yeah got our wet weather gear on you can see thank you burke marine awesome haven't really um showed them we've had this gear for a while now actually they sent us two two sets of their offshore the best line they've got uh, jackets and pants and boots and all that sort of stuff and um it's coming incredibly handy even though we've been well, yeah, we have been a bit cold and, and wet at times, and this is really, um, yeah, it makes such a difference being comfortable and warm when you're, when you're trying to sail and it's bad weather. You're really sort of uh, way more happy to be outside in the bad weather if you've got good gear. And up in Indo and that doesn't really matter, you're sort of happy to have a bit of a cool down, you're, a, you're wet in a t-shirt, but it doesn't really matter. Whereas down here, when you get wet, it's just not fun anymore when the wind gets on you and you're already damp, it's not fun at all. You just want to go inside and curl up in bed. But anyway, so I'm all wrapped up, ready to go. And uh, I think it's going to be rainy until about 7 or 8 tonight. And then it should be a bit less. But anyway, we'll see. We'll um, get out through the bar here before dark and then just set sail. Right, we're on the way. We're out through the, going out the channel now. Um, as you can see, got the main up. Got two reefs in it though. Just being conservative. There's only this bugger all wind right now, but there will be a, a bit more out there. But I always like to have a a sail up going um, across bar crossings or anywhere a little bit sketchy, just in case the motors would die. I could at least keep some movement and steer still. You don't want to be dead in the water when there's waves coming at you. So um, 
you know, and with the main up, that's that's that takes a few few minutes to put up. If we need to, I can roll out the jib in three seconds, and we can be sailing. Um, yeah, we were steering us up here. It, the tide is incoming. It's about half in now. It's about perfect for uh, going across a bar. And from here, I can see there is no break. Is it's, it's, it's going to be mellow. So, yeah, the wind's picking up now. What have we got, Wee Yeah, 16 knots right on our nose right now. Um, and as soon as we turn, you know, it'll be from the right direction, hopefully. So, perfect. All right, so we're nearly out into the bar now. We've got 22, 25. Lots of wind right here. Uh, it's just the marine rescue from here. We're not logging in. But yeah, we've got 24, 25 knots of wind right now, straight on the nose. Um, a bit more than they predicted. <laughs> Hopefully it's going to be all good. As soon as we turn away, obviously that'll, uh, that'll increase to probably better than a beam reach, I hope. But this... Uh, the bar crossing looks very casual tonight, so at least that's in our favour. Uh, we were steering us out. Well, we're about, uh, I don't know, close to an hour, hour into it now maybe. Um, everything's sort of settled down, but as you can hear, it's quite bangy. It's pissing down with rain. Uh, we're, doing a, we're going a bit fast still, it's sort of eight and a half, nine and a half. But yeah, we'll slow that down sooner or later. Um, just got two reefs in the main and only half the jib out. The waves aren't too bad now. We got offshore a little bit, they've settled down. Um, just get the odd one underneath, like that but nothing dramatic and yeah it's more just the rain don't want to get wet at this early stage but uh, there's no one around right now so we'll sort of just stay inside apart from one person to go and have a look every now and again and uh, it's only about six six o'clock now but it's bloody pitch black already anyway uh, from what I could see the, the weather forecast the rain was supposed to be at its heaviest between six and seven so that's about now so um, but that was for onshore so I don't know out here but I predicted the rest of the night just less and less rain, like 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 millimeters. So hopefully it'll be a better night. It's actually full moon, so it would be nice if the clouds broke and we saw some moon. That would be pretty awesome. It's always nice to sail the full moon. Anyway, how are you feeling, Weewa? Good, good. You all dressed up? On track meals providing dinner for us all again tonight. We've got spicy Mexican beans and mild chili con can. Woo! It's a bit of a bounce around here, you can probably hear the noise. The boat's not um groaning or creaking at all, which is amazing. But uh we're bouncing around a fair bit. So we're doing 10, 10 and a half to 11 knots sometimes, so uh, a little bit speedy right now, but it's just because it, the faster we go, the more bloody apparent wind more the wind goes up to the front but don't want to uh, don't want to slow us down quite yet well I have to put in a third reef which I don't really want to do I don't like third reef on this boat uh, I could get get rid of a bit more of the jib maybe maybe that's the next step we'll get rid of a bit more of the jib now we'll have dinner first well, it's about 10 p.m. now got a couple hours left to go on my watch I'm here till midnight and then uh, yeah then I get six hours off which is nice but oh it is rough um, we're sort of about five miles off Ballina Head now. This is where the current's the strongest. And so we've got 20 knots of southeast behind us. And, you know, not as current. You can hear that. Whoa. It is just brutal. Um, these waves just smashing. Now we've had three or four complete big green ones over the top. Luckily, I heard them coming and ducked down. But, um, yeah, it's pretty hectic. I've got hardly any jib out left, we've got two reefs in the main still, um, we're still doing, we've actually slowed down a bit because of the probably, but 
Um, you know, we're probably doing, doing sevens still, not tens anymore. But yeah, it's pretty, um, pretty hectic. Another four miles of this, and then, then we can sort of turn away a, about 10 degrees. And I think the current sort of pushes off after, well, just Byron Bay pretty much, the current sort of dies, goes offshore. That should really, really help. Because right now it's just, it's not nice. I feel sorry for the boat. You know, obviously reefing, it's made it easier, but still it just has to deal with these waves. These sort of conditions are typical New South Wales East Coast where you've just got current, wind against current, and um, I guess it's the bottom topography and things like that, but yeah, it's uh, not really comfortable. Anyway, it's not terrible. We're making headway. We're, um, I think we've probably done about 30 miles already. Um, we're well ahead of schedule. We'll probably have to slow right down at the end or either, either just heave two outside. Um, uh, shit, now I'm getting thrown off my chair here. Anyway, I better go outside and have another look around. Okay, it's uh, just after midnight now. We were uh, as woken up and is on shift. He's got three hours. Um, we passed the worst of it now. We turned the corner at Byron Bay, heading towards Tweed Heads. And I'm gonna put my head down and get a bit of sleep. I'm just gonna stay up here in case Wee Wah needs me for anything. But the wind has eased a little bit. We're turned a bit more downwind. Everything's a bit easier, but we are still banging around, but it's definitely a little bit nicer. Anyway, I'll get back to you once I wake up. All right, we're just hovering along the edge here of the seaway of uh, Southport. There's three other yachts just outside here as well. They arrived just five minutes before us. We're sort of just waiting for the sun to come up a little bit, but I'm just slowly creeping in towards the bar. Got the engines running. We've got a little bit of head sail out. Um, there's 20 knots of wind running. So hopefully the bar will be good. Um, yeah, I had a bit of a mishap last night. We've blown the mainsail, which was a really, really shitty thing for me to see. There's a big hole in the uh, around where the second reef was. Just a massive big hole in it. So not just a little tear. It's a, like a square meter sized hole. So I wasn't uh, really happy to see that. So we dropped that um, probably four or five hours ago and just went under bare poles actually for about all that time we're still doing six or seven knots so yeah the wing mast the rotating mast really acts as the fourth reef basically that and the sail bag you have that and you're still doing good speeds that's the fourth reef anyway we'll try and get in here and uh yeah, have to figure out somewhere to get the sail fixed in the next week it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare as soon as the sun came up i just went in through the bar. The other three boats were out there followed me in actually. They'd just been waiting, I don't know. I was sort of like, what are they waiting for? And then I was just watching and the waves were mellow. So I just went in and they all followed me in. I didn't even wake up the um, other two guys. They were solidly sleeping. So I just rolled on in and there's a bit of a sloppy swell, but no, nothing, nothing to surf in on. So it was all good. All right, anchored up here in Bums Bay, Gold Coast. It's about nearly 7 a.m. now. Um, trip went yeah really really well until I blew a hole in the mainsail. It was the roughest trip yet on Trade Runner. Not the wind was the wind we didn't really see over 25 knots. Had that before, but just the sea state was shocking. Uh, really just shitty up and down, smashing a lot of green waves over the whole boat. Um, yeah, I don't know quite why it was a. Uh, you know, calm two days ago, completely flat calm, and then it came up so quick. It wasn't out of control, but just a lot of bumping and uncomfortability. Anyway, rank it up here. Not the perfect spot, but um, uh, pissing down with rain now. I'll probably go a bit of a sleep and then maybe look for a better spot. I'll get back to you later and do a finish up with this one anyway. I'll show you properly the uh, hole in the sail. I'm gonna have to find someone really quick to try and fix that. I don't wanna be stuck here two, three weeks waiting for a sail to be fixed, but. We'll figure it out. All 
Right guys, I guess I need to give you a bit of a round up of what happened with that sail. So, yeah obviously I blew a big hole in it. And now in Gold Coast, talked to a few people, actually got put onto a guy called Kedrick, he's um, Evolution Sails. Well known guy here, especially with the racing boats. And he had a look at that sail and he said, nah, you could fix it, I could definitely put a patch on it, a couple hundred bucks, 500 bucks. But the next next big wind is going to blow out. The laminate, the glue in the laminate has just failed, and that's seven, eight years. That's just what happens. Uh, I sort of deep down knew that, but I was hoping they'd be like, oh no, for some miraculous reason, this is still okay, and it's just got this little hole, big hole. But I can fix it, and it'll be as nearly as good as new, and it'll last you for years. But obviously, uh, wishful thinking. So anyway, I had to order a new sail. So I ordered a new sail from him just because it made more sense. I could have probably got a deal with somebody and got it, you know, cheaper and this and that and whatever. But fact is, I don't have time to wait. Uh, all these sorts of deals and wheels and wheeling and dealing take time. Don't have time for that. It, the longer I wait here, the less chance I get to get to Lombok. Also, by leaving my broken sail with him, um, he could reuse all the expensive hardware, the wind slice um, head, board the batten boxes and all that sort of stuff and instead of me having to buy all that again it's two thousand bucks for one of those headboards so um that was good he didn't have to come and measure the boat because he had the sail and what i've done now is i've picked up these new over here basically he cut uh, all the new battens for me based on the old sail and he left them a bit long so i'll cut them down and I've taken them with me because that would have been 500 bucks to ship them because you can't roll them up. They're shipping four, four and a half meter, five meter lengths. So I'm saving, saving some money there. And now I'm sailing north and he's going to send the sail up to me when it's ready. So the next few legs are going to be on head sail and screecher, well, flying sail only, maybe spinnaker. And we won't be doing any upwind work. But that was enough of an okay risk I was willing to take just because it's trade winds from... Queensland on pretty much and we're in Queensland now so yeah we're uh, without a sail so yeah I was uh, pretty bummed I didn't have that in my budget planning to um, spend yeah seven and a half thousand Australian uh, and that was for the budget budget sale too to be honest he offered me two different sorts a real fancy um, tri-radial uh, tri-radial cut sail it was a called radial dimension or something or rather the sailcloth really really good stuff and I would have loved that sail it would have been just worthy on this boat and I would have loved it so much but it was close to $13,000 um, without shipping and then the Dacron cross cut but a high end Dacron not like just budget stuff but still just a cross cut I know I'm going to look at that sail every time and just be like oh why did I do that I don't like Dacron sails they don't look good the shape's never as good as a real sail but anyway I didn't have the extra 5000 to spend well, with a kid coming, let's put it this way, it wouldn't have been responsible of me to spend another 5000 on a sail. Just to go a little bit faster when Marie actually just wants to go slower. So, oh look, it's the new me. Look, you've witnessed it here, it's the new me. I'm putting Marie and our yet-to-be-seen baby first, which is what I'm going to have to do. And I'm happy about that. I'm fine with it. But deep down, I'm going to be super bummed every time I look at this sail. Ah! Anyway, no, I'm sure this boat will still go good. We were sailing seven and a half knots with no sails at all the other night, so we don't even need sails. I could have saved the bloody money. Never go upwind. Anyway, okay, that's enough for this video. Um, yeah, the hits keep coming, actually. Then the next video, you're going to see. There's more, there's more. Just, just hits keep coming. Still, punching on through. Thanks very much, patrons. Obviously, I'm just talking about having no money left and no uh, spending all my budget. But you guys do literally keep us going now like literally and i'm not begging i'm not saying anything i'm just thankful that you guys recognize the work that goes into these videos and are willing to put some money towards it it just basically means that i don't have to um you know park the boat for six months and go and shoot photos at snowboarders and i can keep bringing you these videos every week if it wasn't for that money coming in i wouldn't be doing this i would still be sailing i just wouldn't be showing you guys about it so if you enjoy these videos want to see them coming be like the rest of the patrons and jump on board. Link below. Thanks very much. We'll see you next week.